Hey, God hand, just load him in the, the uh, truck that's there next time, and you can just group uh, teleport him. Oh, yeah. Ah, takes like 10 seconds. Okay. If I could, I would actually fill up each uh, each army with guys and uh, and just have you look at it together. But only one guy per army can actually access uh, this stupid computer. So one guy in each army. How good we gonna have to spawn some more? I think. Okay. Let me know how many more. <laughs> yeah, how many guys do we have? <laughs> Yeah, got one, one more two, coming. Three, four. Wait, I think I'll disable Ego for this. Is there one for me? I'll make one. Okay, anyone not hear me? No, I didn't ma mention the Excalibur rounds. Uh, yeah, actually, but we'll get to, get to that. Okay, once you're inside your Humvees, then you go to. Uh, your action menu, and then you get the option use an dash or slash dyk dash 37 bcs, and that's the name of the fancy artillery computer. Once you click that, there should pop up a menu. Does anyone not see that? Wait. Okay. Say again, Mike. Mike just disconnects us. Okay. Okay, what you're gonna see here is uh, you have the bi a big green box, and to the right you have a little yellow box. The little yellow box is your AK controls, so it allows you to operate the radios. You can go to, uh, you can press the cycle button, and then you can use your different radios. Your 343, your 117, your 148, depending on what you have. And then you can press the. Uh, and then you can press the open key, uh, button, and then you get your radio, uh, radio, and then you can press escape again and get back to the, the computer screen. Further down on the right, you have the uh, gray button that says open map, and then you can just open your mat, map and look at what you need to go do, and then press X again. Okay, I'm not getting any questions, so uh, I assume other people are listening or that they can't hear me. Okay. Next thing is uh, the computer itself. You have uh, on the left side, you get, you get a bunch of uh, bars you need to fill out or you can fill out. You have your battery name, you could call that the Thunder Steel Rain. And stuff like that. You could just go ahead and type something random in there. Awesome if you need to. Then you have your FDC call sign. That's your own call sign. It's just a fancy little thing that that you would put in this computer in real life, but it doesn't really matter in, in game. You can just put in your name or any some sort of fancy name like Oxide if you feel that that's cool. Then uh Originally, when this was made, they intended to make some more guns, but we only have the M119 Alpha 1 105mm howitzer, so that's the only option you get there. Then what you need to put in is the grid of uh, of your battery, where your guns are standing. That can, and If you have a lot of guns spread out over a big area, you might want to give a 6-figure grid. If you can give an 8-figure grid, 
that's better. And if you only have one gun, you can give a 10 figure grid and put that in there. The more, uh, uh, of course, the more uh, details you can put in, the more accurate it will be. But uh, here you want, uh, I'm not sure whether you, uh, yeah, that's, how, uh, that's your own judgment, whether you want to all the guns to be encompassed by this or just go by one gun. Both, both things actually work. Um, for this, just go ahead and type the grid we're sitting in, which is 04793-10202. Yes. 04793-10202. Two. That's the ten-figure grid we're sitting in. Next point is our our altitude or how far we are uh, above sea level or below sea level for that matter. And in this case, it's three hundred and thirty uh, thirty-eight meters or three three eight meters. And then uh, you put that in the grid and the altitude. The reason we're doing this now, even though we don't have any guns, is just because the computer won't accept the information if you don't put anything in there. Okay, once we type that in, we have direction of fire. The direction of fire is the direction your guns are, are pointing when you set them up. It doesn't uh, So you don't have to type a new direction of fire every time you do a fire mission, it's just which way is the gun pointing right now. You can give the direction of fire in mils. And pretty much any calculation we do with artillery is in mils because it's more accurate. So for this one, we could just call it 6400. That means the guns are facing north. Next thing we have is trap, uh, target prefix. That could be if we call if we want to call all our all our targets TRP, and then uh, ta target number start. We want to start with target number one. Put that in. It's a, it has to be in mills, that's right, and that's right, General. If you use anything else in mills, then you're just uh, messing up. Also, if you need to give a free figure uh, in mills, then you need to press uh, right zero zero or zero or something like that before. Just real quick to make sure, can anyone tell me? No, no, you can't hear each other. Damn it. The reason that we use mills instead of degrees is that the uh, for each degree, we uh, use 7.8 mils, so it's 7.8 times more accurate, or 17.8. Okay. Once we put in that information, we could have uh, have some observers out there. We know where they are already. Might, they might be in some OPs. Then we can write their names down, like uh, one of them could be Dropkick. And then we could write his grid and his uh, his altitude. We don't need to do that. It's just a little bonus thing to uh, to help us uh, keep track of our servers. If we use uh, 109, then we don't get this feature. Then we just have to do that ourselves. Once you put in some information about an observer, if you need to, then you just press Add Update. Uh, we also have usually uh, work with known points, like we like to use TRPs, for instance. Then you can uh, uh, give a So done. Then we can give these TRP, uh, TRP's name, for instance, TRP101. That's a known point. Write TRP101, the grid, as accurate a grid, grid as possible, and the altitude of, the, uh, of that uh, TRP. This, uh, I'll explain later why that is useful. Some of the, you might already figured it out. Next thing we have is... Uh, these gray boxes, we have one called grid, one called adjust grid, polar, adjust polar, shift, adjust shift. Yes. So first off, we have grid. That's pretty straightforward. It, it means, uh, uh, they'll be explained further in the FO course, but basically an FO doesn't always necessarily know 
what grid his uh, his target is in, but he might know his own gri uh, grid or the grid of the known point. Tag prefix uh, TRP. But yeah, the grid that is uh, if the observer knows exactly what grid he needs hit. Preferably a six-figure grid or an eight-figure grid. Ten-figure grid, you can use it, but um, it's not ne uh, necessarily a good thing in artillery. Okay. Next thing is adjust grid. That is if um, the observer thinks he knows the grid, but he can't, uh, can't be sure, or if he just expects that you need to adjust fire once, uh, uh, once you hit the, uh, the initial grid. So when you press that, you should go ahead and all of you go ahead and uh, press adjust grid. Then you get a new menu popping up. On top, uh, on top left corner. Is anyone not uh, seeing this? Okay, on the top left corner, you get mission grid reference, where you put in the grid of the fire mission, the altitude. Then further down, you have target description. Where you can write some notes for yourself, what kind of target you're engaging, just in case you uh, you f tend to forget. Then you put in radius. That means um, how wide the target area is. Is it within uh, uh, 50, a circle of 50 meters? Is it 100 meters? Is it a kilometer? What is it? And we put that down in meters. How many meters are uh, wide is the target area? Then uh, if it's uh, what's called a rectangular fire mission, you imagine we have a tree line uh, where enemies are dug in and we need to hit the length of that tree line. Then we put in the width as um, that could be 50 meters from the front of the enemy line to the back of the enemy line. And then the line could be three, uh, 300 meters long. Then you put in 300 meters here. And then uh, you put in the attitude. That means the way, the direction the enemy, is, uh, po uh, po the enemy line is pointing. Might be hard to make a picture here, but um, uh, if you all open your map, I'll just uh, try to mark my way out of this to explain it. So all of you reference grid 069 092. You see uh, four, four black dots. Does anyone not see them? Okay. These four black dots is a rectangular fire mission area. It's pretty straightforward. We have uh, a width of 50 meters and uh, a length of 100 meters. And we have an attitude of this that would be uh, 4800 mils. Does anyone not understand what I mean by that? Yeah. I don't understand. Okay. Uh, what part of the... Yeah, both of them work. What part of the this uh, doesn't make sense? Just the attitude with the mill. Okay. It's just... Um, it's basically just the compass direction that it points. So, um, so for instance, this uh, would go from east to west. So it could either be 4,800 or 16, uh, 1,600 mils. That this is uh, the attitude of this one is. Ah, okay, uh, got it. Okay, sweet. Then you go ahead and close your maps again. That's uh, the what would be the target, the grid, and the target description. Um. Target description is important as an FDC because you uh, can get into situations where there are, and there are a lot of FOs out there, and then you have to uh, have to think, okay, is this an important enough target for what we're trying to do here? Is this squad of infantry really necessary to call in fire on uh, if we expect a platoon of tanks to show up soon? So that's why you have to be cold and calculating and saying, no. We're not going to do that, or yes, we're going to do, uh, prioritize this mission because it's important.
That's why I need to pay attention to your target description once you get it. And if you don't get a target description, and you're not sure you want to do this mission, then you need to ask for a target description. Then, um, okay. Then we have the method of engagement. Measures of method of engagement is um, mostly the type of ammo we're going to use. First off, you have the option danger close, yes or no. Uh, can anyone tell me what danger close is? Okay, I got some pretty good answers there. Um, danger close is um, is defined in different ways. Danger close basically means that um, an enemy is uh, or the target area is is close enough to friendly forces that you risk hitting friendly forces with the artillery if a miscalculation is made or if uh, something uh, happen, uh, go, uh, goes wrong. Yeah, haha. Uh -huh. um, normally you would say that's between 300 meters. If it's less than 300 meters, then it's very, very fucking danger close. Just a slight miscalculation could hit your unit by, uh, as well. Um, whereas, um, I think US Marines uh, refer to danger close as within 600 meters. That's danger close. It rarely happens in armor that we encounter uh, get to spot enemies before they are uh, before they within 600 meters. But uh, but if you as an FO or an FTC feel that this uh, FO is too close to uh, to the target, then you can put in danger close, and it's pretty much just for your own reference so you can remember. Um, so you can remember that you need to make the fire mission. Uh, so that you don't hit, uh, or you have less risk of hitting friendlies. Uh, you might want to put in something in your notes as well. Next thing is uh, ammunition. This is 119, so it only has four types of ammunition. HE, DPICM, smoke and alum. And that the, um, there you just put in what you want to put in, depending on the tag description. Oh, not again. What the hell? Who's crashing my server? Also, it has both smoke and white phosphorus. Same shit as yesterday. <laughs> Just when I was the... about to pull the trigger on Yaxo. The sm Damn Yaxo, you. the smoke is white phosphorus. Uh, there are actually two different ammo types, I think. Really? For those, yeah. Wait, let me just go into the editor and check it out. So I think What's there's a. Uh, Yeah, but I'm just going to check it out now. Ah, uh, damn, server so finished crashing. Uh, what was proximity fuse? Proximity fuses are... Uh, activates the sensor within the, sh uh, the shell that uh, makes the shell blow up once it's get close enough to something. That could be the ground, it could be a tree, it could be a building, uh, whatever, basically. With the building tank. Yeah. Also, um, smoke and white phosphorus are different ammo types on the 119. Okay. Normal smoke is... Oh, uh, then you might want to use what's called the... Uh, Smoke in, uh, HC smoke instead of white phosphorus. No shit. Okay, first off, we need to fill in uh, the battery information again. So just put in a name, a FC call sign, and uh, stand by for the grid. Anyone not ready to copy grid? Okay, 047. Nine of three, one zero two, zero two, elevation three three eight. Let's say again. Great. Zero four seven nine of three, 
one zero two zero correction zero four seven nine three one zero two zero two elevation three three eight direction of fire six four zero zero target prefix TRP target number start one There we go. Next thing, press uh, gray, uh, gray button, adjust grid. And we talked about uh, the grid reference, target description, danger close, and we start talking about ammo. So uh, you have four types of ammo. What is I want to do HE, and I want to do a uh, fuse point detonate. So. No, I want to actually want to do DPICM time fused. So then I know uh, need to know how can I even do that? How can I put in a five time fuse if it has told me the answer? This is retarded. You should uh, put in the the known points. I believe it is that you have to solve that. Or do you no, 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 no. Because we haven't calculated the fire mission yet, so we don't know what the time of flight is. So we can't put in a fuse time. No, you don't have to. It's just, why the fuck is it in there then? Okay. Next thing you can you can in, you want to enter is uh, round count. How many uh, volleys you're go uh, going to shoot. Then the adjust round count. How many rounds you're going to fire for the adjust mission. That, uh, we're going to talk about what different kinds of missions there are. Because there exists something called uh, immediate suppression. Where you just want to... Uh, want to scare the enemy and make them stop and uh, maybe even run away and for that you could do an adjust uh, round count of two rounds so you shoot two, uh, two rounds right away just to uh, make the enemy think he's under an artillery attack and then you adjust fire and then adjust piece you can uh, say you're only going to use one artillery gun or you can use several again depending on what you uh, want to achieve then lastly we have metal a method of control and that can either be fire when ready it could be at my command it could be time on target from now on time uh, time on target from clock first of uh, one is pretty simple that's just uh, and it's actually what the FO would ask you so the FO would say fire when ready that means uh, I just need some uh, some fire now please go 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 fire at my command is the FO saying Okay, the enemy is in right place now, shoot now, or he's gonna be there when uh, the rounds land, so shoot now. It could also be time on target from now, that's the FDC saying, hit that target in exactly 10 minutes. And then you just pretty much start your stopwatch, 10 minutes, okay, and wait, wait for that time to pass. Or it could be time on target from clock, which is the same thing, Just he just says, at uh, 0855, uh, commence the fire mission. Again, that's pretty much for um, bigger scenarios. For instance, uh, the company is gonna blow through this town uh, at uh, 09, uh, 0900 and five minutes before they want preparatory fires in the town. So that could be a, a 0855. Are there any questions to what we just talked about? Okay, I'm just gonna make an imaginary fi fire mission for you. We're gonna hit the town of. Uh... Yeah, we're gonna hit the town of uh, Polina. Polina is at grid 106180. Can you repeat the grid? 106180. Oh, 080. Uh, sorry. And the town's elevation is approximately 211, 211. And you might want to always write these things down with pen and paper. 
just because if uh, for some reason you lose the data or you have to repeat the fire mission, then you have it written down already. Because for strange and inexplicable reasons, this computer doesn't always sa uh, save stuff. Yeah, Polana. Target description, that would just be build up area. It's a width of 200 meters. If you only put in uh, the width, then the computer is going to assume you're talking about a circle. If you put in length, it's going to assume it's a, re a rectangular mission and, it's and it wants an attitude. So we're just going to put in radius 200 meters. Danger close, no. Uh, and it's just going to be um, HE delay. Five rounds. One, uh, one round just come, one uh, one piece adjust. Fire at my command. And then uh, once you put in all that information, you press the gray button that says FFE slash adjust. FFE stands for fire for effect or adjust, of course. Once you click that, it will start uh, making what's called fire solutions. Then you get two uh, solutions. You get what's called a low solution. And that's uh, the lowest possible arc of fire to hit the target. That means you get a fast time of flight. In this case, you only have to, uh, the round will only have to fly for 16.4 seconds, and then it will impact. The problem with that is if there is uh, if there are hills or mountains between us and the target area, you would just hit those instead. You will also get a high solution, which is the highest possible arc of fire which is good if there's a mountain or hill in the way, but it uh, gives a um, much longer emission. Yeah, that's a JTAX job. Um, what was I? Yes. So the high solution in this case would be t uh, give us a time of flight of 27.7 seconds. That's worth taking into account, depending on the situation in the AO. If it's a friendly unit that desperately needs uh, fire support ASAP, you might have to use a low-angle fire mission. But if um, you have a lot of airborne assets in the area, then you might want to do a high angle just uh, in order to, to allow them to stay on gr at ground level without getting hit. Then uh, you get, the, uh, uh, get a bunch of information in connection to that uh, solution. We're going to talk about the high solution because it's most commonly used. You actually get all the information you need to tell your battery when they fire. You need to tell them fire mission. That's the f first thing they need to know. They need to know that it's a fire mission. Then you tell them platoon adjust, which means it's a f this is for the this platoon. For instance, um, you ha uh, imagine you have three uh, platoons. You say first platoon adjust, then the uh, first platoon knows it's their mission and they have to do an adjust mission. Number one, the first mission is one round, and then uh, and you say special instructions at my command. That means it's only at the FO's command, we're not going to shoot before he's, he asks us to. Then they get, you give an azimuth, that's not relevant to uh, in this game. Then you give a charge. For the uh, for the round, give um, the deflection of the gun and the quadrant. Quadrant is uh, for some reason they say quadrant here when they mean elevation on the gun. That's that is the elevation. Then you tell them five rounds, fuse delay in effect. Once uh, once you've told your battery that, and and then you need to inform the uh, FO what you have decided to do about his call for fire. And then you uh, you'd call up the observer and say, "This is uh, guard hand H E in effect, one round T R P zero 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 one, flight uh, forty seven point uh, seven seconds." So he knows that there's one round of H E coming in in forty seven uh, forty seven seconds after we say shot. Are there any questions on this? You must. You must always remember to uh, to give the message to observer, because if you don't give that, then the observer is just like, hmm, is he got? Uh, is this fire mission coming? 
did he even hear me? Oh, he gets all kinds of uh, weird stuff going on, and and what might happen is that he calls you again, and that's just annoying, basically. So you just as soon as you have uh, calculated a mission, you just give a, a fire mission. HD in effect, one round tier P1, time flight uh, 47 seconds. That's also where he hears if you have decided something else. For instance, he asked for DPICM and you decide uh, I'm running low on DPICM and HE can do the same, uh, can have the same effect. So I decided on using HE. Okay. Let me just look over my notes quick. Okay, that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much a grid mission right there. That's what you need to do as an FDC when doing grid missions. Those are fairly simple missions. Uh, we're going to talk about it just later on. So uh, for now, just go ahead and uh, and go uh, click the back button a couple of times until we get back into the main menu. The next thing we have is what's called a polar fire mission. Polar fire missions are when the airfo knows where his own grid is, but he's not sure what the what grid he's looking at. For instance, he is uh, he needs to hit a certain house in town, or he needs to hit something in the open field, and he can't really figure out the exact grid of that uh, point. But he knows the distance to it, and he knows the compass direction to it. And then uh, we can use our computer and our clever brains to figure out what grid we need to hit. So go ahead and click Polar. Now all of you should see a completely new menu. And this is where knowing your observers beforehand is a pretty good idea because then you can just click this drop down list and just say, oh, uh, observer dro uh, drop kick. Yeah, there he is. If you don't know the observer beforehand, then you can just start writing him in. So, drop, kick. I'm just going to make up a grid for drop, kick real quick. Drop, kick is at grid 0909. 085. He has, uh, his altitude is 291. And then uh, he will give you what's called an OT direction. OT stands for observer to target. So that's from him to the target. He gives you a direction in mils. He could say uh, OT2400. Then he knows pretty much the range. It could be that he has a vector and he can pretty accurately say there is 700 meters out there. But it could also be that he's just looking at a field. He doesn't have the tools for figuring out where exactly he needs to hit. So he can just say 500 meters. And then that's his estimate. And the idea is here that we need to adjust fire based on his estimate because he's not sure what, um, what the enemy is. And then we need to add in if there is a difference in the altitude. For instance, he's sitting on a hilltop in this case. So there would be an altitude difference from uh, what he's trying to hit. For instance, if he's trying to hit the T intersection to his north, then he, we would be in an altitude that's two, uh, 284. That gives us a difference of uh, roughly 6 meters, and we need to put that in as well. Then we do the target description just uh, as we did before. And the uh, width. Minus 6. Good question, General. It's a good question. Um, 
And then of course we go in onto the method of engagement. That looks pretty much the same as before. And the method of control also works in the same way. Once we've decided on uh, what we're going to do about, uh, about the mission, for instance, he has uh, for HE delay, we decide to use the pick'em, so we not, uh, decide to do something else than we've decided now. Put in that information, and then click in file for effect slash dot adjust. Just put in some random info, it's not important really. Then again, we get the file solution. Now we get less information, mostly because I put out and took away some special instructions. Then, as soon as we get this uh, solution, we tell our battery fire mission, platoon, three rounds, HE, charge five, use quick, deflection, five, uh, one, six, four, quadrant, one, zero, four, eight. Message to observer drop kick, discard hand, effect, uh, quick in effect, three rounds, TRP one, time flight, 49.1 seconds. That's pretty much what you need to do as an FTC, and the, the quicker you can do this, the more and the more effective you can work. Then once uh, guns start firing, you'll give the uh, the FTC and the FO some more information. We'll go over later. Are there any questions on the polar fire missions? Okay, so close mission. Last thing is shift. It's pretty obvious. Can anyone uh, tell me what shift is? No one? Uh, if you have a uh, uh, designated target and you kind of shift the director fire from that point. Exactly. So, um, so we know, for instance, we know exactly the grid of a church in a town. Uh, um, so we have the, we have that church eight figure grid. So what we're gonna do is the the forward observer. He uh, doesn't know his own grid. He doesn't know the target grid, but he know that. Uh, the, but he knows that church is a known point to us. We know exactly where that church is. So he can say uh, Polona, a uh, church in Polona. Okay, we're gonna just gonna look that up on our list. Oh yeah, we call that CRP seven. Then he's gonna give us OT direction, which is again his compass direction in mills. That could be uh, 4200. And then what he's going to give us is telling us from where he sees it, how much to the left or how much to the right of uh, the target is, uh, how much close or farther away it is, and how much higher or lower in the terrain it is. This might not make sense immediately. So... Um, I'm gonna put up some uh, something on the map for, uh, to show you. I have one more question for Andrew. Yeah. Um, is left a negative number? Or, or yeah. Is that right? And it, it kind of goes, what's the negative number? Well, okay, never mind. I know what I have just did. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just finding some something to make this example really obvious. Yeah, let's use Gorka. All of you can find the town of Gorka, right? Does anyone not see Gorka and TRP-107? Okay. So uh, in this imaginary case, we have uh, enemy OP here. At grid uh, 0904. Uh, 0910. And we have our friendly, uh, friendly observer here. So he knows. Um, hey, a uh, hand. I think you're marking in the wrong channel. Oh, that's why. Yeah, sorry. I was in group chat with the, the other guys. One second.
Does anyone not see those now around Gorka? Okay, so in this imaginary example, the FO can see uh, the church and he can see the enemy OP. He couldn't in real life because the building, what, whatever. So he knows, um, he, f he estimates that there's uh, 200 meters, 250 meters up to the enemy OP from, uh, from the uh, PO zone. Uh, this is a crappy example, actually. I'm changing something. One second. Gonna move him over here so it makes more sense. Okay. So he's looking at the DRP-7. And he gets a, uh, gets his OT direction from there. Gonna make sure what it is. Ah, uh, damn you, instructor slot. Okay. Yeah. He has his OT direction. And then he knows that the enemy is uh, going so far to the left of the uh, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, objective compared to him and so much closer so he would say uh, right say right 250 meters drop 50 meters and change the elevation that and up Let's say up 10. Uh, is this making sense what I'm saying now? Now you need to speak up because we're going to do this later. And if you don't understand, then you're going to miss a lot. Are these numbers from the TRP or from you? Good question. Yeah, those are when, uh, when you look at the, uh, the TRP. Get a, uh, he has an, uh, his observatory uh, target direction. Then, uh, from the TRP to the target, there is uh, 200 meters to the right, for instance. And uh, it might be 100 meters closer, then drop 100. It might be 20 meters lower in the terrain, then, uh, then down 120. Uh, from the TRP 107. Yeah, yeah, from TRP. So he, he knows where, uh, so polar mission, that's from the FO's position. And uh, and the shift mission is from the TRP, because he doesn't know, necessarily know exactly where he, he himself is. And, and then I say drop from the position where I see the enemy to the TRP. Um, I almost feel like we have got the terrain to show this. I'm just uh, thinking. I get a bit confused with the terms drop. Yeah, exactly what Killing is saying. That from where you're seeing church, then to the right of the church, for instance, that uh, amount of meters to the right of that church from where you're seeing it. That's why, uh, that's why, um, that's why you, uh, um, that's why, um, yeah. You get right 50. Yeah. That could be right 50, for instance. Then if uh, the enemy, the, uh, the enemy is between you and the church, it could be drop 50. Or drop 100, depending on how close they are to you, depending on, uh, from, or how far away they are from the church. If the, the church is between you and them, then it would be add something. And uh, if the enemy is uh, lower or higher in the terrain, it would be up something or down something. I really... Um, otherwise, don't worry too much about this, because this is the FO's job to figure out for you. He needs to tell you what you need to put in there. I'm just... Uh, this is just to orient, uh, orient you guys about what he's uh, trying to tell you. But it's the FO's job to say. It's the FO, FO's job to say. Write, uh, write 100 at 200. That's his job. You pretty much just do what he says because you can't see what's going on out there. Okay. 
I think I have to see it outside in the FO scores. Then it's clear. yeah. It will make more sense. Uh, I'll also when when you get this link, there are some pretty pictures that shows you exactly what uh, what I'm trying to explain. Yes, OC direction is the direction from the observer to the target. Yes, in a shift mission, the t uh, the uh, the target will be the t uh, the target reference point or the known point, whereas in a polar mission, the target will be the target. Okay. Um, next thing we're going to go over is communicating between FO and FTC. So go ahead and get out of your vehicles and we'll uh, form a little school circle. 